Good morning, St. Peter's Sunday School friends. We're back with another lesson from the Bible this morning. We know, again, everything in the Bible, God's Word, is true. We are still in the Old Testament book of Exodus. But before today's lesson, let's take a look from our Gospel Project for Kids, our review from last week. Glad you're back. Last week, we learned that God's people were not very faithful to him. Moses was gone for a while, and the people chose to worship an idol instead of God. God disciplined his people for worshiping a golden calf. Do you remember that? He disciplined them because he loved them. This week we will learn that God had plans to dwell with his people. He never left them, never forgot them. He gave them special instructions for building a place where that would happen. Our story today is called, The Tabernacle Was Built. <clears throat> From Exodus, chapter 35. When Moses was on the mountain with God, God said, Tell the Israelites to make a tabernacle for me so that I may dwell among them. God gave Moses very specific instructions for building a tabernacle. The tabernacle would be a really big tent that the Israelites could take with them. The tabernacle would be where God met his people. <clears throat> Make it exactly like I show you, God said. So Moses gathered all the Israelites together. He told them everything God had asked. He asked them to bring materials, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple and scarlet yarn, fine linen, and goat hair. Animal skins, wood, oil, spices, and gemstones. God gave two men, Bezalel and Oholiab, special skills for building and creating things. They and all the other skilled craftsmen came together to build a tabernacle for God. At the same time, people kept bringing offerings of what they had. And pretty soon, the craftsmen came to Moses and said, The people are bringing more than enough. We don't need all of this. So Moses told the Israelites to, to stop bringing their offerings. They built the tabernacle just as God had instructed. The tabernacle had ten curtains made out of linen, and each curtain was 42 feet long to measure that and get an idea of how huge the tent was. Eleven curtains made out of goat hair formed a tent over the tabernacle. And inside the tabernacle, the people made a veil. They made an ark, a table, a lampstand, and many other parts. Every part had its special purpose and was made just as God had said. When the time came, God told Moses how to set up the tabernacle. God told him how to anoint the tabernacle so that it would be holy. Anoint means to pour oil on. God told Moses to bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron put on the holy garments and Moses anointed him to be priest. <clears throat> Aaron's sons were also anointed to serve God as priests. Moses did exactly what God commanded, and the tabernacle was finally finished. God had led the Israelites from a cloud, and now the cloud covered the tabernacle. God's glory filled the tabernacle. God made a sign for the people. If the cloud covered the tabernacle, 
the people would stay where they were. When the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the Israelites would move and take the tabernacle with them. The cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle during the day, and fire was inside the cloud at night. All the Israelites could see it as they traveled. All right, my friends, it is always true when we come together after that reading. I'm going to take a look at our work here, the Gospel Project. First of all, that big picture always together was volume two out of Egypt. We began with Joseph sent to Egypt, following the timeline to where he explained dreams. Joseph saved his people. Jesus was born. Moses was born and called. Then we had the 10 plagues and the Passover. Red crossing, the Red Sea crossing. Bread from heaven. Jethro helped Moses. The 10 commandments. Last week, the golden calf. And here today, the tabernacle was built. <clears throat> And then always in your booklet here, there's always an activity page. Here today it says color by number. The instructions, use the key below to add black. Sorry, to add back the correct colors. If you don't have gold, use yellow. So down below they have the color code numbers with the colors. And then over here, first of all, the big picture question for last week and today also. What is worship? Do you remember that question? Worship is celebrating the greatness of God. And I have a few more thoughts to add to that. The greatness of God. And here it also talks about God is great. He is the greatest person who has ever existed or ever will exist. He is all-powerful and he loves us. He alone deserves our worship because of who he is and what he has done. That's good to remember. So here's the first question. Why does God want to dwell with his people? know that already, but here are the words they share in the lesson. God loves us, he wants to be with us, and help us to learn to love and to obey him. And second question, why is it good for us to have God with us? I can't imagine that would not be possible, but here it is. God sent Jesus to dwell with people. Jesus lived a perfect life, died the death we deserve, and rose again. Now anyone who believes in Jesus receives the Holy Spirit who lives with us and helps us love and obey God. Last question before we part. How does God dwell with his people? Today. Through the Holy Spirit, God dwells with us everywhere we go. Help them understand, helping you understand, how we worship God is more important than where we worship God. Let's pray about that before we say goodbye. Dear Lord, Thank you for showing us love. We know that we cannot earn your love. You pour it out on us anyway. Help us to live lives that glorify you. We want to worship you. Thank you for dwelling with us. Amen.